we'll let you get settled. Thank you. What is your... Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. Thanks for stopping. Sure. What's your reaction to lawmakers in Dayton and El Paso who say President Trump is not welcome because of his rhetoric? Right. The president's the president of all the people. And uh, what he wants to do is go to these communities and um, grieve with them, pray with them, offer condolences, and quite frankly, uh, offer thank you and appreciation to those who are first responders and put their lives on the line and were able to take out the shooter so quickly. Those American citizens who put uh, their bodies in harm's way to protect their loved ones. And he also wants to talk about potential solutions and how we keep this from ever happening again. And lastly, I'd say he wants to have a conversation with them that it's time to unify. That we can do something impactful and important to prevent this from ever happening again if we come together. Let me, let me just follow up with you on that because you talk about the need to unify. And again, some of the criticism that the president has been getting is about his rhetoric. So does the president need to change his rhetoric in order to help unify this country? The president's been talking clearly over the last several days about what he wants to do and the direction he wants to take this country. I hope you would ask that question of people on the left. What about I heard some of the comments made by Beto O'Rourke just recently. And I believe it was on your network. And it seems to me he's less concerned about the safety of Americans and more concerned about winning the caucuses. And that's problematic in many ways because quite frankly that, that type of rhetoric is irresponsible. Um, and it's dangerous, and it's time to move on. He's the president. president. Would, would the president be willing to work with President Barack Obama? The president is considering taking when Repeat it comes that, I'm sorry. What are some of the executive actions that the president is considering? Can you name two or three things that are under consideration well, or in talks? Yeah, he mentioned some uh, um, in his speech. Uh, we've talked to lawmakers already about some of the gun control legislation they have, whether it's the Toomey Mansion bill, um, whether it's um, the red flag laws that we've talked about on multiple occasions. Uh, he's also talking about some of the um, loopholes that would have potentially stopped uh, this tragedy. For example, one of the shooters had a rape and kill list, but because of HIPAA laws, no one was able to see that when he went and purchased a firearm. There are crisis exemptions that exist. so. Things can be done at the legislative and the executive level, level, and we're looking at all of those things to, to make sure this never happens okay, again. Are there any sort of meetings that the president has planned in terms with you know, lawmakers? Has anybody been invited to the White House to discuss uh, some of these potential actions? Well, obviously, the president's leaving tomorrow with the First Lady uh, to go in and meet with people uh, in these communities that have suffered uh, unspeakable tra uh, tragedy um, at the hands of, of evil people. Um, We've spoken with many lawmakers at this point. At the staff level, we're trying to coordinate with them to find out the best means and, and ways to get together quickly. Um, right now, uh, the president's focus is um, is going into these communities and having a conversation with people on the ground. Does the president support the background check bill that passed the House? Does the president support that bill or does he oppose that bill? He's looking at, at all of these bills right now. Again, uh, he ascribed several solutions uh, from the diplomat room the other day that we're looking at. Um, I don't want to get ahead of any piece of legislation right now or where he would be on that. He's gathering all the information, and uh, when we have an announcement on what he supports, we'll let you know. One thing is, is that the one thing is is that the is that the there's rhetoric that has happened uh, with the president that, and many people are blaming the president for his rhetoric, not causing perhaps this, but inspiring it. What's the what's the response? Um, I, I don't think that's what's happening. Actually, I think they are literally saying. Um, and I've seen Democrats on air saying he is responsible for this, that his rhetoric is responsible for this shooting, um, is responsible for these deaths, this murder. And that is a dangerous place to take this country because there are plenty of people, as you know, who are evil in this country, who are, there, there, there are plenty of people in, the, there are plenty of people in this country, there are, there are plenty of people in this country who commit acts of evil in the name of politicians, of celebrities, and all types of things. It's not the politician's fault when someone acts out their evil intention. And I'll, I'll just have to say, we would never dream of blaming Elizabeth Warren for the shooter who supports Elizabeth Warren. We would never blame, we would never dream 
of blaming Ocasio-Cortez for someone who perpetrated a terrorist attack on a DHS ICE facility because he used the same rhetoric she uses about concentration camps. We would also never blame Barack Obama for the police shootings in Dallas. We wouldn't blame Bernie Sanders for the shooting of Steve Scalise or other Republicans. I'm sorry, but and quite frankly, it's ridiculous to try and make those connect in some way. You have to blame the people here who pulled the trigger. Those are the ones who are evil. Those are the ones who are sick and mentally ill. And those are the ones that have to be dealt with. Hogan wrote manifestos echoing the president's language. He doesn't have anything on his public schedule. How is he spending his day today? Um, he's meeting with staff on a wide range of policies, uh, having conversations and prepping for his trip to uh, these communities. This is a very, this is a, this is a very, very um, serious moment in our country's history. This president recognizes the gravity of this moment. You saw that manifest in his speech in the diplomat room and what he wanted to convey to the American people uh, was the fact that he shares in their sadness, but he also shares in this anger. And he also offered solutions and made the point that we can come out of this stronger, together, and unified if we come together and put forth solutions that actually make a difference and a change. This is not about legislation that makes people feel good. It's about legislation or executive action that actually makes people safer. Does the president need to cool down his rhetoric, yes or no? Thank you, everybody.